entire week, we've been talking about being mentally strong. And I don't know about you, but that's exciting for me because I remember a time when I wasn't mentally strong. So I have a question for you today. Who would you be if you were able to be mentally strong? Who would you be if you were able to be the person who can control their thoughts, their behaviors, and their emotions? Y'all better get excited. Well, I hope that interests you. If it does, go ahead and hang out with me today. This is where we come to heal, baby. This is the Healing 101 Tribe. Welcome to the Love Tribe. My name is Dr. Manifa Jones. I'm a master's level psychologist. I'm a family therapist, a family counselor. I am a transformational life coach. I was a previous college professor. I have over 25 plus years of experience. But I want you to know, even as an entrepreneur, business owner, health and wellness business distributor, I want you to know that I'm a mother, a daughter, a sister, and guess what? I'm a wife, and now I'm your friend. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the love tribe so hey guys we excited because it's friday but we excited every day i know y'all turn up on a weekend i told y'all i know i know y'all turn up on a weekend but i want y'all to know dr j turn up every day get excited dr j turn up every day so i'm excited because we're talking about a topic that hits home for me we're talking about things mentally strong people don't do and the reason why I absolutely love this topic, mom, is because I used to be a person who was not mentally strong. I just wasn't. I was, I was weak-minded. I was easily manipulated. I had a low energy. I had this, this vibration about myself that I had to prove myself to everybody. And I don't know why I was that way, but unfortunately I was. But what I'm super excited about now is that now that I learned that I don't have to be that person, that, you know, it's so much better for me now because I accept myself and I love myself. So life has the ebbs and flows of life. It's a little bit easier. It's much smoother. It has a better feel to it. Those good vibes, those happy joys. So let's talk about... We know we all go through ups and downs, right? But let's talk about being mentally strong. We said mental strength is a result of you getting control of your thoughts, behaviors, and your emotions. I want you to know that whether you know it or not, your thoughts, behaviors, and your emotions, guess what? Guess what? You're controlling them now and you're just probably controlling them in a way that you may not love it, but you're definitely controlling them now, right? So we want to get to the place where our thoughts, our actions, and our behaviors are exactly what we want them to be, right? So get excited about that. So let me tell you what we're going to talk about today. And I'm excited because I asked each and every one of you the question when I got started, who would you be? Who would you be if you were mentally strong? Who would you be if you chose yourself? Who would you be if you spoke your truth? Who would you be if you stood up for yourself? Who would you be if you were spiritually, physically, psychologically, mentally, emotionally, all that you want to be? If all of your relationships were nurturing, right? If financially you were super stable, like who would you be? That's why I love this journey because guess what? I don't know about you, but I'm trying to find out. I'm not, ain't no way in the world I came to sign up to live in this platform and then just die in a dash between my date of birth, hey queen, and my date of death, go through all of that, and I haven't actualized physical mastery. I haven't actualized mental mastery. No, 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 no. I'm so not okay with that, right? So with being mentally strong, we went over the 13 topics that we're going to talk about. The first one is they don't waste time feeling sorry for themselves. Things mentally strong people don't do. They don't sit around saying, woe is me. They don't sit around trying to figure out why somebody did what they did because they understand because when you go on that platform, you are giving your power away. 
We have to make sure while we're becoming mentally strong that we are seeking to ask the right questions. The question is not why me? The question is not why did this happen to me? That's not the question. The correct question is what am I supposed to learn from this? What am I supposed to get up out of this? This is obviously a part of my journey that feels a little hurtful, feels a little negative, feels like an obstacle that I need to overcome. Now, back in the day, I would just cry. Back in the day, I would be real sensitive and I would wonder why the world is against me. But now I understand and I speak it forth every day that the whole world is conspiring in my favor. And if I really believe, if I, if I honestly really believe that the whole world it's conspiring in my favor. If I really, 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 really believe that, why would I be sitting around thinking about what you did to me, what you didn't do to me, why you did that? And if I really believe that the whole world is conspiring in my favor. So I want you guys to know, I believe that. There was a time when I believed that the world was against me. There was a time when I believed that people were against me and I actually operated my life that way. And I was very guarded and I was very secretive and I wanted to keep everything to myself because I didn't believe that most people meant me any good because I had so many negative interactions. But then the day I declared that I'm going to speak over myself, that's why affirmations help you to change your mind about you. You think it's your friend. You think it's your cousin, your mama, your sister, your brother, your relatives, your co-workers, your church members. It's not. It's you. Because what we do is we, with our mind, we set up our world. The external components of our world is only a reflection of what we believe we deserve subconsciously, right? So with understanding that, and we say, you know what? I'm not going to waste my time feeling sorry for myself. There's some things that happened that I didn't like. Like, I really didn't like them. Like, I had to pray. I had to seek forgiveness. Like, I really didn't like what happened. But then I had to go back and say, what am I labeling associated with this person or with this incident? And what am I supposed to learn? So I want you to know a very traumatic thing happened to me in, in the year 2021. I always used to say 2021. Like, in 20, it, was, it, was, it was crazy. Something I would never expect. Like, have you ever been like hit left field? Like you blindsided, like you, you real cool with somebody like this person was a close, 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 close family member. You couldn't have told me in a million years that this was going to happen to me. What happened to me? Right. And I went into this sorrow and this grief and I went into this just this crazy cycle of thoughts of what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? Until I said to ask myself the question. What are you supposed to learn from this? You give and 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 you don't value yourself. So when others don't value you, that's just a reflection of what's going on inside of you. You didn't respect yourself. You wanted the respect from them. That's why you gave them all your money and all your time and all your energy because you were begging for their respect. But why don't you just spend a portion of that time respecting yourself? So when I looked at it, I was like, oh, Number one, mentally strong people don't feel sorry for themselves. Number one, I don't care what happened to you. And you like, Dr. J, that's not cool. What, what if, what if so, um, I've had people that got raped and molested and they've been beat up violently. I'm one of them. Fun, a lot of things happen to people. I got knocked down the steps when I was eight months pregnant. Believe me, uh, let me tell you, I understand violence. But this is what I want to say to you. What are you going to learn from it? Am I going to learn to stand up for myself? Am I going to learn to speak up for myself? Am I going to learn to attract to my life nourishing relationships? Am I going to not look at the shiny gold and get excited? See the fellow walking down the street and be like, oh, he cute. And just let him all up in my life. Not knowing this brother is troubled. I'm talking about troubled to the 10th power trouble. Got challenges and some more stuff. But because it was cute in the beginning, I didn't look at the red flags. I didn't pay attention. And so what my beautiful universe 
What God was trying to teach me is, girl, you going somewhere. You need to pay attention. You have a purpose and a destiny. You need to be in alignment with your assignment. And I know you think this fella came to destroy your life, but I really sent him for you to see me. Because, see, if he was this perfect husband, doing everything he should have done, being faithful, being loyal, you might have been caught up in your own ego and your personality. You might have said, oh, the reason why life is good is because of my husband. The reason why life is amazing because my husband paid a bill. The reason why I'm such a happy woman is because he don't cheat on me. The reason why, no, you would have associated all of the good things with your husband. And I want you to know right here, right now, my daughter, my sweet daughter, Monifa, who is the apple of my eye. There will be no other gods before me ever. So I'll send multiple people multiple experiences, multiple trouble, multiple obstacles that you will name the devil. You will name it something bad. You're going to have a lot of labels for it, but I'm going to send you multiple things that happen to you so that you can come to the end of your rope and just come find me because I've been here all along, just chilling, just chilling quietly, patiently waiting. And when your ego and your personality can no longer hold you up and it can no longer fill the bank account because it's negative and it can no longer fill your ego with your Mercedes because the repo man can't pick it up. And when it can no longer fill your ego with your beautiful home, you'll get evicted. And when it can no longer fill your ego with an amazing man, I'll send you a trashy one. And when it can no longer fill your ego with your amazing business, guess what? It's going to get shut down. And when you can no longer fill your ego with your job, I'm going to make sure you get fired. You the bomb.com and you do a great job. But guess what? I need you to get fired. Because if not, that's right, queen. Obstacles are the blessings. What, you, what do you label them? Because I, you, all these things you upset about, how about I sent them? <laughs> How about I sent them to you? I just wanted you to figure out who is the true provider. I wanted you to figure out the right way to go. The wrong way, the wrong journey. So many of us are on that highway. You know what highway we on? Hey, Heidi. Yes. Hey, everybody. Oh, I'm missing some comments. Thank you, Heidi. How are you? Let me tell you. So many of us are on that um um. That highway called ego, called me, myself, and I. You are tuned to the radio station WIIFM. What's in it for me? WIIFM. What's in it for me, baby? And I know when I was younger and I was growing up, I was trying to take care of me, my four, and no more. I want to make sure my family was good. I make sure, you know, I'm an upstanding person in the community. And it was about my ego and my personality. It was about me being the best I could be. But see, it's different now. I absolutely believe in excellence. However, I'm now a servant. I'm excellent to be a servant. So I don't feel sorry for myself no more. So when relationships leave my life, I believe that it's a part of the plan. And I say, look, if you for me, you can't go. And if you against me, you can't stay. Get excited about that. Now that excites me. If you're against me, baby, I ain't even worried. I'm so powerful. You can't even stay around me. You're going to be itching. You're going to be all allergic. You ain't even able to hang out with me. I told you my altitude level, certain people can't take that type of oxygen. They just can't. And I already know that. I don't have to eliminate you. You will eliminate yourself. And that's exciting. So I don't feel sorry no more. So when say, oh my God, what if it's your son? I don't feel sorry anymore. Because see, what I understand is that, see, we look at things wrong. We always still have that ego and that personality. The reason why we feel sorry for ourselves is we still stuck on ourselves. When anybody that's blood related to me, anybody in my family, anybody that I call my family, I will die for them. I will cut you for them. But when they come for me, I want you to understand it's an attack. 
It's in a distraction. I know what it is. So guess what I understand? Even though they coming for me, hear me people who got problem with their relatives and family members. Well, even though I know they coming for me, them coming for me is coming for themselves. Because we are one, whether they understand it or not. We are one. So when they come for me, they are coming for themselves. So even though they're coming for me, I don't have time to feel sorry for myself. I have to protect my son. I have to pray for him. I have to cover him. Because he's connected to me. I have unconditional love for him. There's nothing you can do to separate yourself from me. Even if you stab me in the back. Even if you step on me. Even if you leave me for dead. Even if you leave me hungry. Ain't nothing you can do. Unconditional love. Unconditional, unforgiv uh, unconditional forgiveness. Isn't that beautiful? Because see, I now have vision. When I had sight, I felt sorry for myself. When I had sight, I cried at night. When I had sight, I called my best friend. You won't believe what they did to me. When I had sight, husband, I need a hug. I'm having a rough day. You won't believe what happened. But now I have vision and I'm aware and I take note and I journal. And it's very specific times when they come after you. It's always critical times. Pay attention. So when you get caught up in your own ego and your personality, that's when you're going to be mentally weak. You're not going to be strong. Because when your daughter is coming against you, you're going to be fighting your daughter. You don't fight your daughter. You pray for her. You cover her. You protect her. And you show her an example of love and forgiveness and unconditional love. God said there's nothing you can do to earn my love. And there's nothing you can do to take it away. We are a form of God. We are the parents. God is our father. We are parents. So when my family comes against me and I'm caught up in my ego and my personality and my friends come against me and my neighbors and my coworkers come against me and I'm caught up in my ego and my personality, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to snap back. I'm a snap back, baby. But then when I come to a higher level, because I'm journaling and I'm thankful and I'm grateful. And I understand that we think 60,000 thoughts a day. And when you stabbed me in the back, you stole 30,000 of them thoughts. It was like, she did this, she did this, she did this. I'm like, why'd she do that? Why'd she do that? Why would she do that to me? I love her. I love her. I thought we were cool. I can't believe this happened. And it is just 30,000 thoughts went all to you after you stabbed me in the back. So because we think 60,000 thoughts a day and we make 10,000 decisions a day, we want to make sure we're intentional about it. We're just not out here willy-nilly, just waiting for anything to happen to us. We are intentional. So when the attack comes, and there is no such thing as pain, sorrow, hatred, war, all of those things, it's the labels we create. So when the attack comes, I understand it's a sign to be aware. It's a sign to sit up, take note, make sure you are operating in awareness, make sure you are being very observant. What I used to do is I used to cry. I used to go in a room, get under the blanket, take a sleeping pill, disappear for a couple of days. You know what I'm saying? Stay in the dark. But now I get my pen and my paper. I get in my warrior mode. I get in my prayer mode. I start writing. And I said, if I'm supposed to right now be feeling sorry for myself, it's a distraction 100% of the time. If I'm supposed to be feeling sorry for myself, it's a distraction. You ain't going to make me feel sorry for myself because I'm mentally strong. I'm going to pay attention. Oh, son. Okay, you're doing it. Okay. Oh, my best friend. Okay, you're doing that. Okay, family and relatives. Okay, you're doing that. Let me pay attention. It's a distraction to knock me off of my purpose and my destiny. Alignment with my assignment. It is my birthright to be prosperous in my health and my wealth. And anything that rubs me the wrong way, um, it, it, makes, it gives me disease and illness. It takes me off of my path of joy. Don't even talk about the money. You think you're going to be creative. 
and make money, you think you're going to walk in that job and master all of the projects when your family's stabbing you in the back and you all sad and you depressed and you can't even get out the bed? That's why you late to work every day because you disorganized. You know why you disorganized? Because you sad. You know why you sad? You sad? Because you feeling sorry for yourself. But if when the attack came, you said, wait one minute. Those are one of the lists to be mentally strong. I should never, ever, never feel sorry for myself. Everybody should write that in the comments. I will never feel sorry for myself. I will never feel sorry for myself. I will pay attention. I am a queen. I am a goddess. I am an empress. I'm a warrior. I'm a lover. I'm a magician. How in the world can I tap into the low vibrating frequency of feeling sorry for myself? How am I going to be mentally strong? How am I going to get to the next level? Thank you, queen. How am I going to assert myself so that I can live at my highest and best if I'm feeling sorry for myself, I cannot, that's right, Heidi, never, ever, never feel sorry for myself. So when the attack comes, my family member wants me to curse them out. My family member wants me to be all upset and go through the whole family. Like they're going to go through the whole family and tell the whole family I ain't nothing. And the whole family going to agree with them, right? So what am I supposed to do? Oh, let me call. Let me call. Let me let me stop the let me stop the words. Let me no, I ain't, I ain't get involved in that. I know who I am. You can have your little conversations all day and all night. I don't give a flying flip. I am so unbothered. I'm on my purpose and my destiny. I ain't got time for no foolishness. So guess what? I'm gonna be busy doing covering you. <laughs> I'm a because guess what? You come against me, you know the karma. You know what I'm saying? It's coming to you. I want the best for you, even though you came against me. I still want the best for you. Ain't that something? You attack me, but I still want the best for you. I'm still covering you. I'm still protecting you. Can I tell y'all something? This wasn't me two years ago. I felt revengeful. I did. I did. I felt pain. I felt sorrow. I felt pity. I felt like crying for myself. I felt very, very over, overly sensitive. Every time I saw little pictures of different things online, I was like, wow, I thought this would be the season of my life that I'd be doing certain things. And I'd be like, oh, well. And I became very sorrowful. So when I tell you this story about never feeling sorry for yourself, just take it from me. Just don't ever do it, ever. Don't ever do it. Okay, got you, queen. Don't ever feel sorry for yourself, ever. Because the moment you go into that sphere, that's the place of weakness. That's not your place of power. And remember, when we said we're being mentally strong, the things we said we are focusing on is we're taking back our power. We're embracing change. We're facing our fears. We're training our brain for happiness and success. And if you are feeling, you're welcome, Heidi. You're so welcome. If you are feeling sorry for yourself, how are you embracing your power? How are you um, not being fearful? How are you walking into your happiness, your peace, your bliss, and your joy? If you're sitting around feeling sorry for yourself, I need you to journal. I need you to meditate. I need you to pray. I need you to come back to the power inside of you. You were not born to suffer. I thought that is not true. You were not born to suffer. Tap into the power within. If you're feeling sorry for yourself, you're on the wrong track. If you're feeling sorry for yourself, you are stuck in your ego. You are stuck in your personality. If you're feeling sorry for yourself, you missed the assignment. See, I understood the assignment. I don't know if you understand the assignment, but I understood the assignment. It's not about me. It's about we. It's not about me. So when you come to hurt me, it's not my job to hurt you back. She's back. Get excited. When you come to hurt me, it's not my job to use profanity. When you come to hurt me, it's not my job to slander your name and to get the other family members against you as well. That's not my job. When you hurt me, guess what my job is? Going deeper. 
rise higher. Elevate, baby. Elevate. Because if I am being attacked, that means you're trying to leave wounds. And when you are wounded, you're not as strong as you need to be. Because I promise you, the storm is coming. I promise you, the war is coming. And because we know that it's coming, we need to be prepared. We need to be battle tested. We need to be strong. And you don't want to use these times to feel sorry for yourself. You want to use these times to strengthen yourself. You want to use these times to build up yourself to be mentally strong. You want to use these times to find out what is the lesson. What am I supposed to be learning here? What am I supposed to be getting? What am I missing? I need to be observing. Okay, I don't value myself. So my family member is going to show me that they devalue me till I finally stand up. I don't respect myself. I don't love myself. So a whole bunch of things going to keep happening till I say enough is enough. I have nothing to defend, nothing to hide, nothing to protect. I love me and I love you. I forgive me and I forgive you. Let's go. And anything you came to bring that people would label as negative and as bad, I just don't receive it. So it doesn't operate in my world. So you can keep that because people treat you the way they feel about themselves, baby. So if you bring it all that over here, it's because you already got it. And so I'm just going to send you light and love while I elevate. <laughs> I'm just going to send you light and love. I ain't going to battle with you. I ain't going to fight with you. I ain't going to send you no 14 page text. I ain't going to send you no rude email. <laughs> I ain't doing none of that. I'm just going to elevate. So guys, we've come to the end and today is Friday. So guess what I'm doing today? So today I am going through the whole entire week and I'm finding out my winner of the week. I think I already know who it is. My winner of the week who has a special prize. I think you guys are going to love these prizes. I really, 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 really love them. I'm actually going to show you a picture on Monday. I really, really, really love them. So I want you guys to know each and every person that's a part of the Love Tribe. I love you guys. This is, this is my service. When you guys say thank you to me, I want to say thank you as well. Thank you for showing up for yourself. Thank you for not letting me heal by myself. Thanks, Cheryl. Thank you for not letting me be on this journey alone. I told you guys, if you remember, go watch the replays, y'all. When I started this journey, I said, I'm sorry, guys. I'm healing live in front of y'all. Been through a lot, right? And I said, if y'all want to come on this journey with me, I'm just being transparent. Just come on this journey with me. People have said a lot of things about me, but one thing they can't say is that I'm not a generous person and that I'm not loving and kind and that I'm a servant and that's who I am. So guys, don't feel sorry for yourself. We're going to be mentally strong. And when things happen to us, we're going to label it appropriately. We're going to journal about it. We're going to release what no longer serves us and we're going to move on to higher heights. Because we no longer feel sorry for ourselves in 2022. We elevating over here. Get excited. Yes. So we're at the end of another day. So let's do a quick meditation. I always tell you guys, if you don't have five minutes, you don't have a life. So I definitely welcome, welcome, welcome you to just pull away. The other 23 minutes and 55, the, excuse me, the other 23 hours and 55 minutes, that's all you all day, every day, do what you want to do. But five minutes, steal away. Tap in. I know now and I can't I can't feel sorry for myself. I felt sorry for myself in 2020. I don't today. I'm unbothered. <laughs> I don't feel sorry for myself. You can put your hand over your heart. You can close your eyes. A lot of people see. They don't have no vision though. We gotta learn to go within. It's so much power inside of you, sis. I'm just telling you. You're, you're way more powerful than you know. But because we Netflix, social media, friends, work, we, we pay the bills, like we, 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 we never tapped inside. So we don't know. But I promise you, you take five minutes, man, you will elevate expeditiously. May love, I love that. May love never fail for you. 
May love continue to shine upon you and grant you peace and be gracious to you. Mm -mm -mm. I changed God's name to love. I forgive myself for believing that I should have done better when I didn't know how. And I also forgive others for the same. I forgive myself. I just forgive myself. I messed up a lot, a lot. But I forgive myself for believing that I should have done better. And a lot of people hurt me too. Guess what? I forgive them too. I am open and ready for things to start going my way. I am asking to receive a message in this physical world today that is a reflection of that. I am open and I am ready to receive that message. It's already done. It's already done. I already have it. It's already mine. Guys, if you want that affirmation, I would love to send it to you. Go ahead and DM me, message me, and say, hey, send over that um, affirmation for me. If you're on my YouTube video, make sure you subscribe. I have my affirmation in the description box. I would love for you guys every day. This has really transformed my world because every day I'm looking for good things. I'm open and ready for good things to come. And when the good things come, I say, what better can happen today? So guys, you guys have an amazing turn up weekend on purpose, right? I don't want to say weekend because it's like week, right? So I want to say have a strong end, <laughs> have a strong end. And I'll see you guys on Monday live at five.